howdy there, folks. Elvis PEMDAS here talking to you about the distributive property. Now, I have a question. What's Elvis's favorite movie? That would be The King. Kong! <laughs> First thing we're going to talk about is the distributive property. That's a property which allows you to multiply a sum or difference by a number or variable. So here's what this says. We have a sum in here, this quantity B plus C, and we're going to multiply this quantity by A because we can't add these two together. This is a B and this is a C. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna distribute this value outside the parentheses. And we're gonna distribute it to the B and to the C. So we're gonna multiply A times the B, which becomes A times B. And it's gonna be plus A times C. And that's how the distributive property works. The next thing we're going to talk about are like terms. Those are terms in an expression or equation that have the same variables with the same exponents. This term right here, 5x squared, has a variable of x and an exponent of 2. So we're looking for another term here that has a variable of x and an exponent of 2. Here we have a variable of x and an exponent of 2. So these two would be considered like terms. And since this is y to the first and z to the first, these would be considered like terms as well. Now, how would you simplify this, you need to use the commutative property. Rewrite this so that these two terms are next to each other. Now that these two terms are next to each other, we can simplify. How do you simplify 5x squared minus 8x squared? In order to combine two terms like this, when we're adding or subtracting, the variable and its exponent is going to stay the same. The only thing you're changing are the numbers out front, the coefficients. What is 5 minus 8? That's going to be negative 3. The x squared stays the same. Same thing over here. 2 y yz plus 14yz, the yz's stay the same. You just are changing the number out front. So what is 2 plus 14? That is 16. And that's your answer. Over here, we have a to the fourth. We're looking for another a to the fourth. a to the fourth, a to the fourth, a to the fourth. No a to the fourth. So there's no like term with a to the fourth. What about a to the first? a to the first, a to the first. No, no like term with a to the first. What about a to the third? Yes, this has an a to the third. But note, it also has a b. Because the variables are not the same, it has an a cubed and a b, these two would not be considered like terms. So there's nothing to combine in this. So this would already be in simplest form. Why was Elvis such a good burglar? He always found the right key. <laughs> Example time. Example one says so simplify each expression. So here we're going to use the distributive property. We're going to take this seven and we're going to multiply it to the t and to the six. So what we do is we take seven and multiply it to t and we get seven t. Then we take the seven, multiply it to, well, it's actually a negative six. Seven times negative six is going to be negative 42. So we write minus 42 right here and you're done. Let's try another one. Here, we have a negative outside the parentheses now. So negative three, we're gonna distribute inside our parentheses. Negative three times y is gonna be negative three y. And then negative three times negative two is gonna be positive six. So we write plus six. For part C, we have the quantity 10x plus 8 times 1 fifth. So again, it's outside the parentheses. Usually it's out front, but sometimes it can be behind. You're still going to distribute. We're going to take this 1 fifth, distribute it to each of these. But to make this a little easier, because this is a fraction and these aren't, we're going to turn these into fractions in here. That's going to look something like this. 10x is the same as 10x over 1. 8 is the same as 8 over 1. Now we can distribute and it's pretty easy. What's 1 fifth times 10x over 1? Well, we multiply the numerators together and the denominator together and you get 10x over 5. And then same thing here, 1 fifth times 8 over 1. 1 times 8 is going to be 8 and 5 times 1 is going to be 5. So we have 8 over 5. How many times does 5 go into 10? That's going to be 2. So we get 2x plus 8 fifths doesn't really simplify anymore. So we leave it like that. Part D, we're going to take this negative 1, multiply it to the 2h out front, and we get negative 2h. And then negative 1 times 7 is going to be negative 7. So we write minus 7. Why did Elvis's soda can explode on him? Cause it was all shook up. Oh, 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 you try. Part A, there's just a negative out front. What does that mean? Think of it as negative one, okay? Anytime they just have a negative, it's the same thing as negative one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that negative one and we're gonna distribute it to the Q and to the negative 15. So negative one times Q is gonna be negative Q. Negative one times negative 15 is gonna be positive 15. Over here, negative 4.5 times y is negative 4.5y. And then negative 4.5 times negative 2, those are both negative, so our answer is going to be positive 9.
Down here, we have two thirds times the quantity 4x minus three. We're gonna distribute this, right? And since this is a fraction, it would help if these were also fractions. So we're gonna rewrite them as fractions. 4x is the same as 4x over one, and three is the same as three over one. Now we can distribute easily two thirds times 4x over one. We multiply the two times the 4x, we get 8x, and then three times one gives you three. Then we distribute the two thirds to the negative three over one, and we get two times three is going to be six, and then three times one is going to be three. So we have 8x over three, minus 6 over 3. Can we simplify this any further? Yes, 6 over 3 is actually the same as 2. So this becomes 8x over 3 minus 2, and we're done. Lastly, we have the quantity 2p plus 4 times 6. We're going to distribute this 6. 6 times 2p is going to be 12p, and then 6 times this 4 is going to be 24. Now example two says write each expression as a sum or difference. So we have 18 plus 5m over four. Now normally what we do, we'd simplify what's in our numerator, but you can't add these together. This has an m, this does not. So what we do instead, break it up into two separate fractions. We're gonna put this four under the 18 and put this four under the 5m. You are allowed to do that. So we rewrite this as 18 over four plus 5m over four. Now we can simplify this, divide both of these by two. And then over here, you can't really divide each of these by anything besides one. So we leave our answer as nine over two plus 5m over four. Part B, again, these are pretty easy. You're gonna take this three that is in our denominator and we're gonna put it under each term in the numerator. So it's gonna be eight thirds minus nine X over three. The eight thirds does not simplify, but this nine X over three, we can simplify the three divides into the nine three times. So we end up getting eight thirds minus three X. Okay, example three says simplify each expression. In order to simplify this, we need to combine like terms. What are like terms? Terms in an expression or equation that have the same variables with the same exponents. So here, let's look at this first term. We have negative five X. So we're only considering the variable and its exponent. So this is X to the first power. Is there another one with X to the first power? This is X to the second power. So these would not be considered like terms. What about here? We have X to the first power. Yes, that is a like term. So these two are like terms x squared no different exponent but as you can see the 4x squared and the 10x squared those are also like terms so what we're going to do in order to simplify this we're going to put the like terms next to each other using the commutative property so i'm going to rearrange this i'm going to put the negative 3x in front of the positive 4x squared now we're going to simplify this negative 5x minus 3x is the same thing as negative 5x plus negative 3x in order to combine two terms like this when we're adding or subtracting the variable and its exponent is going to stay the same. The only thing you're changing are the numbers out front, the coefficients. So negative 5x plus negative 3x becomes negative 8x. Okay, you don't have to do anything with the variable or the exponent. Those stay the same. You just are changing the numbers out front. Over here, 4x squared plus 10x squared. Please do not add the exponents. Again, the variables and their exponents stay the same. So what is 4x squared plus 10x squared? That is 14x squared. Part B, we have 2m minus 4n minus 6mn minus 8m squared n squared. So we're looking for like terms, which means same variables with the same exponents. Here we have an m to the first power. Is there another m to the first power? Yes, right here, we have m to the first power. However, this term also has an n attached. This does not. Remember, it has to be the same variables. This is an mn, this is just an m. So these would not be considered like terms. This n, same thing here. This has an m now, this does not. So those would not be considered like terms. This mn also has an mn over here, but the exponents do not match in this case, right? This is m to the first, n to the first, this is m to the second, n to the second. So there are no like terms in this expression, meaning that you can just rewrite that and that is your answer. That's the simplest you can make that expression. Why didn't people like going out to eat with Elvis? Because every time the check came, all you'd hear is, Elvis has left the building. <laughs> you try. So again, we're looking for like terms. We're looking for the same variables with the same exponents. So is there another a to the first power here? Yes, right here, but this also has a b. So those would not be considered like terms. Here, we have an a to the first, just an a to the first. So these two would be considered like terms. So we're gonna use the commutative property and put them next to each other. Now that we do that, we can see that we can combine these two. What is 7.5a minus 42a? Again, it's gonna stay as an a. We're just changing the numbers out front when we add or subtract. So 7.5 minus 42, this can be negative, 34.5a. These two would not be considered like terms, so you just rewrite those and you're done.
Down here, we have negative m plus 9m cubed minus 2m minus 7m cubed. m to the first power. Is there another m to the first power? Yeah, this guy right here. So those two would be considered like terms, just like m cubed and m cubed would be considered like terms. So we're going to rewrite it so they are next to each other. We're going to take this negative 2m, put it in front of the positive 9m cubed using the commutative property. Now we can simplify this a little bit further. This is the same thing as negative 1m minus 2m. So negative 1m plus negative 2m, that's the same thing as this would be negative 3m to the first. Don't change the variable or the exponent when you add or subtract. Those stay the same. You're just changing the number out front. Here, 9m cubed minus 7m cubed. We're just changing the number out front. 9 minus 7 is going to give me 2 and I'm done. Okay, example four it says write an expression for each phrase, then simplify. So we have negative four times the quantity four plus w. Negative four times, so it's going to be multiplication, and then the quantity. When you see that word, that means put parentheses, and then whatever comes next is going to go inside the parentheses. So it's going to be negative four parentheses four plus w. Now all this means is that we're going to use the distributive property. So negative 4 times 4. This is negative. This is positive. So that's going to be negative 16. And then negative 4 times w is going to be negative 4w. So we just write minus 4w. And you're done. Here we have 2 times the quantity, 3 times c plus 9. So again, anytime you see the quantity, you're going to put parentheses. So 2 times, so 2 multiplied by the quantity, parentheses, 3 times c plus 9. So that looks something like this. Now again, all you have to do, use the distributive property. Take this 2, multiply it to the 3c, so that becomes 6c. And then 2 times 9 gives me 18. So we write plus 18, and you're done. Oh, we'll be dancing to the jailhouse rock. Dear house rocker, cause that's how the song goes, ah, uh, you try. Okay, again, we have negative 5 times the quantity. So negative 5 parentheses x minus 6 inside those parentheses. Take that negative 5, multiply it to the x and to the negative 6, and you end up getting negative 5x plus 30 because negative 5 times negative 6 is going to be positive 30. Part B says twice the quantity 4 plus y times 7. Now this looks tough, but it's just the same as the other ones. Twice the quantity means 2 times the quantity. So 2 parentheses 4 plus y times 7 is just 7y. Now we can use the distributive property, take the 2, multiply it to the 4, and get 8. And then 2 multiplied to the 7y just becomes 14y. You're done. Okay, now let's do our word problem. This says the recommended heart rate for exercise in beats per minute is given by the expression 0.8 times the quantity, 200 minus y, where y is the person's age in years. Rewrite this expression using the distributive property. What is the recommended heart rate for a 20-year-old person and a 50-year-old person? So let's start with the first part of this question. It says rewrite this expression using the distributive property. So let's do that. Take our expression. We use the distributive property. 0.8 times 200 is going to give us 160. And then 0.8 times negative y is negative 0.8. 8y. So we now have our simplified expression. We can use that to answer the next part of the question. What is the recommended heart rate for a 20 year old person? Well, remember, y represents the person's age in years. So we're going to take 20, plug it in for y. And when we do that, we can then take negative 0.8, multiply it to 20 and get negative 16. So we have 160 minus 16, which becomes 144. And that would be beats per minute. So that's the recommended heart rate for exercise for a 20 year old person. What about a 50 year old person? Well, again, we take this simplified expression that we have we plug in 50 for y this time negative 0.8 times 50 is going to give me negative 40 and then 160 minus 40 gives me 120 and that would be beats per minute 